How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another Boruto episode review. Today we're doing Boruto episode 43. And at first, when I first watched the episode, I was like kind of iffy about it. I didn't know if I liked it. I didn't know if I thought it was uh, just okay or whatever. And overall, it was a it was a above average episode. It was pretty good, about like a three out of five, if anything. But nothing like too spectacular, because although not a lot, like kind of, ha not a lot of stuff kind of happened. But it still kept me interested, at least to the point where I didn't want to fall asleep watching the episode like last week so the beginning of the episode explains what happened last week so even if you didn't watch last week's episode and you're just and you just skip it to watch this week's episode uh you're, you ca you're caught up basically so basically last week i say basically a lot jesus so anyways what happened last week was someone was planning to kind of rob the bank and it didn't work out properly, so they were planning on kind of like detonating, detonating themselves with paper bombs and stuff like that. Boruto talked him out of it, etc., etc., right? But that was that whole part of like the whole bank robbery was actually just a diversion. It was just a diversion for the actual robber to go in there and steal some of the the jewels, I guess, or really just one jewel, it seems like, in the, in the episode, as it shows. So basically, there's a vault. There's a vault all the way back in there inside of the bank, and basically, it's always below minus 20 degrees. And if it changes even just a tiny bit, the sensors will go off and people will be notified to go there and stop whoever's trying to go in there. So basically, someone with ice release Keke Genkai that they do explain in the episode as well managed to be able to obviously lower their body temperature so that way they wouldn't set off the the whole sensor stuff like that and Sarada actually kind of picks up on that because there's actually like this flower I guess that kind of gives her the hint that that's probably a possibility of what happened but it wasn't like full concrete proof stuff like that they kind of like were like yeah it's definitely this da 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 and yeah the, the main bad guy of like this little like mini arc does know how to use ice release kick at genkai and part of, part of me is really really appreciating it because we didn't really see too much of ice release because you know the only member of the yuki clan which you know is all completely destroyed and i'll get into that um the whole entirety of the yuki clan was destroyed besides Haku being the last known member of, of the, the Yuki clan, which is known for their ice release Keke Genkai. And as you know, Haku died in the beginning of Naruto part one and the whole the entirety of Team Seven's first like high level ranked mission. And now all of a sudden there's this, there's this ice release Jutsu user. And I don't know. I don't know. I don't, they obviously have to be a part of the, the Yuki clan, but I just thought that they were all completely destroyed. So anyways, there's like this flower that's like like frozen, I guess, and Sarada like messed around with it and was like, yeah, this is definitely ice release. And that's obviously what it was because like the whole thing is like frozen, I guess, and it's like whatever. So Borto is like, oh, you know what we should do? We should like not notify anybody because if we do, they're gonna turn it into a B rank mission. And as Genin, we can only do like D and C rank commissions. So let's just keep it to ourselves and do it on our own. And then Sarada obliges, and so does Mitsuki, obviously, because he'll do anything that Borto wants to do. Sarada actually was was actually kind of fun in this episode. She hasn't been annoying like she always has been. Stuff like that. The antagonist in this episode was actually really fun to watch as well. It kind of felt like a lot, like a part part one, and in the sense, a lot of Boruto has kind of felt like part one, but like less interesting. <laughs> but yeah, so they go ahead and they talk to the guy, the scientist guy that was in the Boruto movie uh, when they were doing the whole like tuning exams. That guy, I forget what his name is. Uh, I'll probably throw an image on the screen. Uh, if I don't forget, obviously, in post-editing, but 
the, the scientist guy from the Borto movie, like he gets introduced finally in this episode, uh, which obviously is, is elaborating that we're finally getting into that whole like Borto movie arc that I've honestly been waiting since like three or four weeks ago and it hasn't happened yet. So whatever. <laughs> so we finally meet that guy. He takes the three, the three Genin, Borto, Sarada, and Mitsuki to this kind of like, like, back alley kind of way in like the black market where he actually goes and like buys some like Ill illegal crap and i was like oh that honestly just like this place kind of looks neat it actually looks pretty interesting and i wanted to see a little bit more but of course we're never gonna get that and probably ever <laughs> so uh there's like this like graffiti wall that lets people know that there's a lot of like illegal like purchasing and selling going to be happening happening and a lot of vague like wording as well and so they noticed that and so Boruto Sawada and Mitsuki come up with a plan in order to go to the area where it's actually the, the gem from the vault is being sold and then they can stop them because that's like their whole <coughs> excuse me their whole thing that they're doing uh in this episode uh ends up becoming really interesting later on but of course it's later on so we're not talking about that right now we go to a shot where they obviously like reveal they very very obviously reveal who's the ice release keke genkai user uh and who's the one that like robbed the bank and stuff like that when shikadai shikadai was actually a pretty important part of this episode and also he will he'll also become a bigger part in next week's episode which will just continue on because it left off with a cliffhanger this week so uh shikadai's like whole thing in this episode is that he's trying to learn like strategy and all this other stuff with like shogi kind of like how shikamaru did back in part one and shikadai was like was like walking on this bridge right he walks past um the kid with like the red hair we weren't given a name but like the kid with the red hair the ice release user right and then like here are these two other kids one of them has a paper bomb that he got from his dad and was like just a selfish little brat he, he would try to put the paper bomb on a frog and i was like bro why <laughs> are they trying to like promote animal abuse or some, something dude like that's not right kind of pissed me off if anything so the paper bomb actually detonates inside the kid's hand and Shikadai actually saves him. Kid's head, hand is all busted up and stuff. It's like all bloody and everything. Shikadai goes somewhere else. He's playing Shogi by himself trying to learn defenses. Uh, strategies rather. And he meets the kid who's the ice release user. The, the red hair kid. I, again, we weren't given a name so I don't know what his name is. So somehow they both kind of became like friends and stuff and they decided to and they decided to like play shogi together and they ended up playing shogi for like a while and we we hear a lot of stuff that we heard from like shikamaru and asuma back in like kind of like part one and then kind of like shipping in as well uh it was i was honestly interested in, it was it was interesting hearing all that stuff again so boruto sarada and mitsuki meet up with the guy who has the gem there was a setup happening uh the guy who robbed the bank actually used the diversion with a with a hostage who was like covered in paper bombs very smart bad guy and it's not like anything too ridiculous and i'm glad it, it wasn't something like ridiculous and re retarded honestly because like the the, the boards of bad guys and villains that we got in the series so far have all been stupid in terms of their motives and kind of like their threat level like like the whole like motive with the bad guy in this episode is like he's very robin hood-esque in the sense that he robs from the rich and then gives it to the poor very robin robin hood like which is interesting and all the other villains in the series are like i'm gonna blow up the village because stuff that happened in the past with donzo and yeah and the foundation and i'm just like can you not can you not can, can we not do this again <laughs> so very like very like reasonable motive and very relatable motive as well so uh the guy runs off he goes to like this low end like kind of like poor village obviously that he was trying to help uh, the whole thing that happened was that the guy sold a gem and then he used the money to help out the village repair like this this water wheel which goes down to like the bottom of like this 
this like kind of like mountainside area to like a whole like water reservoir and that was where they were they, they would get their water in the village and that broke from repeated use obviously so they can actually have drinking water of course and essentially what happened was is that because it broke the village uh people had to like walk like three hours in order to go and get like drinking water so robin hood here is freaking getting money from the rich and helping them out so that's basically what happens of course borto and the other two fail borto's like oh i'll do better to do, do right and then the episode just kind of ends off with shikadai waiting for the red hair robin hood-esque kid to show up so uh the reason another reason you can tell that it's the same kid is because the voice actors are pretty much identical they're not really entirely different from each other so you can just like obviously tell and that's pretty much the end of the episode next week we're gonna get a couple other stuff with i guess metal lee is gonna be doing some stuff maybe denki and iwabe as well since they're all on the same team so next week will maybe be interesting maybe i hope it doesn't end off on like some stupid cliffhanger and we have to get like another episode of this mini arc because I just want to go ahead and get into like the Boruto movie stuff. I don't I don't want to have to wait like an additional week for them to go ahead and just start on it. I want them to hurry up and just start on it. Stop like binging around the bullshit and just get around to it. <laughs> uh, and I said I was going to stop swearing too. I'm sorry. Anyways, that's the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button. And hitting the notification button so you never miss a new video. I hope you guys have a wonderful life. And I'm out.